Help me tell your neighbor, say, Jesus is taking care of me. Okay, okay, okay. Help me tell somebody beside you how Jesus is taking care of you. Share it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, one more time this morning. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you help me appreciate the elevation place of praise? Please, you may have your seat. Have your seat. You know, in the first service, I challenge people to say how Jesus has been taking care of them. Many of us enjoy the pleasures of being a child of God. We pray and God answers our prayers, but we don't share testimonies. I'm on your case today. You sang, Jesus is taking care of me. How? We want to know. Some people think that you have to be the kind of person who loves to be seen for you to share a testimony. People who share testimonies don't always look like people who love to be seen. Somebody shared a testimony here this morning in tears. Does that look like somebody who loves to be seen? But somebody who has come to return all the gratitude to God. Those two testimonies you heard, if you were in the service early, those were people that I challenged in the first service. If you know you have been hiding a testimony, wait for the second service, and we'll give you opportunity to share it in the second service. And then they showed up, and we shared. You know, we've been... <laughs> Praise God. And you know, um, those were powerful testimonies. Testimony of the lady who was being harassed at work. I mean, on this workers' day, I pray in the name of Jesus. Anyone whose career is threatened, the hold of the devil is broken over your career. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that was what happened for her. She could have lost her just uh, six people, but laid off just like that. Somebody brought a wrong ac a a accusation against them. And she received the boldness and the courage based on the word that came from this altar to send that email. And she did, and made a complaint. And there was, you know, uh, um, someone sent to investigate the situation, and you, you heard the testimony. Or is it, was it the sister that got poisoned? And said two people died from taking the same poison. But she came into a service like this, and a word came that said somebody has been poisoned, but God is going to keep you alive. And that same day, a skin that was black before became normal, and now she's alive and well. Will you celebrate the God who keeps people alive and well? Now, I, before I go into the world this morning, just give me two more minutes. I also, uh, as I was singing there right now, I just felt the Holy Spirit convincing me that you are also guilty as child. <laughs> yeah. You know, I share my own testimonies in the midst of messages and all that. But I think we are also going to be insisting that our pastors, even if you share your message in the midst of your, your testimony in the midst of your message, you share it openly as well. Because we need to model these things. God delights in hearing you celebrating what he has done for you. And I'm going to keep challenging you. This season is our season of testimonies. Amen. As we share one, another one will come. Amen. As we share one, another one will come. Amen. Now, because of people who need to hear your testimony so that they know God is still alive and well in the midst of his people. You remember the night, last night of increase. I will keep sharing that testimony forever. The lady who came up here and said she was in the last night of increase. Somebody shared a testimony who is in her 30s or so who has never menstruated before, a lady. And God healed her. And she said she was sitting down there. And she told God, God, you made me hear this testimony because I only see my period twice a year, once every six months. 
And she said, based on that testimony, if you could heal somebody who has never seen it before, heal me now. Me, I still see it. Make it regular. And she said she started menstruating right there. And it has been regular since then. Now, I need you to hear this. If the other lady had refused to share her testimony, who would be the helper of that other person's faith and joy? That's what happens when you withhold your testimony. That's what happens. So, I have a testimony this morning. <laughs> and my own testimony is for my entire family. I'm sure my wife is shocked that I'm sharing this testimony. But it's, it's, a, it's a new season and we have to keep sharing testimonies. So I'm from a family of six. My oldest brother, who is stepping into his late 50s right now, has never had a biological child. Six, oh. That's not important. Leave, my, leave me on my testimony. She, she said I should say it to well. I said I'm from a family of six. She said six out of 26. Yeah, uh, I'm from a large family, polygamous family. You know, some people have been talking about polygamy recently. If I put my mouth, I will shatter that table. Yeah. All those people talking about polygamy, they don't know nothing about polygamy. When you grow up in polygamy, you won't wish it on your enemy. Yes. I grew up in a family with five women at home four women at home. So, we'll talk about that another day. <laughs> I'm coming back to polygamy another day. But I'm from a family of six from my mom, maybe about 26 or thereabout from my dad. You know, <laughs> until his death, they keep adding to it. <laughs> uh, but my oldest brother, has been married for over 25 years. Last Monday, we took delivery of, the, of his first baby. So I'm sharing this testimony on behalf of my entire family. My brother is also a, 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 a man of God, so, well, as a pastor in his church. We've trusted God with him. I was you know, on his train, November 16, 1996, when he got married. We've waited for this long. My wife and I pray, we have prayed, prayed for them, and they stayed put and stayed with God. Yeah. And this past week, we christened the twins, Sam and Samantha. A boy and a girl, Samuel and Samantha. Our God is still in the business of doing miracles. If there's anyone in this service today, on this Thanksgiving service, first day of the month of May, you're trusting God for the fruit of your womb. I need you to know that some of us have seen God manifest himself practically. He will not withhold your children from you. Amen. My God will visit you in record time. Amen. There shall be no more delay. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is still alive and well. And none of the patriarchs was completely buried. Even though there was delay, but they had their children. In our family, we're celebrating a modern-day Abraham who waited for over 25 years and stood on the promises of God and God visited and a set of twins was delivered. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. So both my brother and his wife, they're both over 50. Yeah. My brother is going on 57. 
His wife is 51. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is my testimony. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. I challenge anyone in this service who has a testimony, wait for third service, we'll give you some minutes. Just like we did at the beginning of this service. Yeah. Don't be the kind of person that will hide the things that God is doing. When you come into a service like this at the beginning, tell us if you have a testimony. We will start taking your testimony right in the service. You know, we used to do videos and all that. We will still do that for people online who will record themselves and send it, or who will write it, send it. Testimonies at Elevation Edge or 2 already. Send your testimonies via online. We can still read it and all, but we want you. You know, there are notable miracles. The one that everyone needs to know. What silenced the adversary in Bible days were notable miracles. In Acts of the Apostles chapter, uh, chapter 3, when Peter and John were going into the temple, and a man lame from his mother's womb started to walk, the adversary said, knowing now that notable miracles have been done through these people, we can no longer look away from them. The only way we will continue to project the work of God and the power of God in this generation where darkness is looming everywhere is to project the hand of God upon our lives and to show this generation that our God is still alive and well, doing miracles in the midst of his people. Your testimony is the next one. But the one you have now, share it. Share it. Share it. Let people know that God has been good to you. And then you'll be challenging somebody, somebody's faith, to trust God more so that God can deliver their own testimony into their hands. God will use you to steer somebody's testimony this season. In Jesus' precious name. We we'll continue the teaching series, Sent. And this second was a taught message in the series. I'm speaking to the topic, I Powered. We're going to be discussing the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and its effect in the life of a believer. We started out last Sunday with a message in the same progression, which we titled Unleashing uh, joy, contagious joy. And we laid it on the table that one of the benefits of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer is joy unspeakable, full of glory. Real joy that does not depend on happenstance or what is going on around us. So Galatians 5 and 22 in the New Living Translation says the Holy Spirit Produces, I said, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. These are the kind of fruits that the Holy Spirit produces in our lives. If I have the Holy Spirit, enough of talking about it. It's time to allow him to produce certain things in my life. This season, where all the indices are going down in our world, is the best time for you and I to submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit the more, so that when men say there's a casting down, we will be able to say boldly that there's a lifting up. Because it produces joy in us. Our joy is not based on our bank account. It is when the joy of the Holy Spirit bubbles within me that my bank account will have no choice than to swell up. Are you still with me today? Yeah. You know, Habakkuk 3 and verse 17, it says, Though the fig tree will not blossom, there may not be fruit in the vine, the labor of the Holy Spirit may fail. He said, I will not look at all those things. I will, I, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. And he said, uh, then things will start to change. It will make my feet like the hands feet, and I will uh, I'll start to walk upon my high places. That will be the testimony of somebody this season. In the precious name of Jesus. It's also important as we progress in this teaching to let somebody know that it's not just enough to understand that the Holy Spirit produces love, joy, and all those things in us. That the Holy Spirit also empowers us 
with unusual attributes with which we should live this life and live it well. The only thing is that most believers have turned these attributes around. We think about them more from what we can gain from them, from thinking about what God wants to do through them. How do I mean? In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, when you read verse number 8, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost, or, or the end of the earth. This presupposes that the power of the Holy Spirit has a primary purpose. The primary purpose of the power of the Holy Spirit is to empower me to be a witness. A witness for Christ. is to empower me to be God's mouthpiece. is to empower me to be a delegate of heaven. is to empower me to be an envoy from uh, the kingdom of Jehovah. That's what it is supposed to empower me to be. A representative of God. Meanwhile, as this as the Holy Ghost empowers me to be God's representative or representative on earth, he is also empowering me to live that life to the fullest. Now, many people know that there's power, as in the power of the Holy Spirit is available. The only thing is that the way we channel it is only for our gain. How I wish on this Workers' Day, for instance, the way some people Pray when they have job interview is the way they pray when they want to go on evangelism. Yeah. Because when you have job interview, you pray like your life depends on it. And we want to engage the power of the Holy Spirit to gain wisdom, to gain understanding, to know what to say, to know how to say it, to deploy our mental faculties so that we can mesmerize the interviewer. What about deploying the power of the Holy Spirit to discern that argumentative person in your neighborhood who, who is abusing everybody's mind and planting, you know, deceit and falsehood in their, on their, in their mind. Because that's the primary purpose of that power. Isaiah prophesied about Jesus Christ in Isaiah chapter 11, one of the Messianic prophecies of the prophet Isaiah, hundreds of years before Christ was born. It was talking about what would characterize the life of the Messiah. And in Isaiah chapter 11, when you read from verse 1, it, it, it says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of it. Verse 2 says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. It was talking about Christ, and by implication, talking about you and I, because the Spirit of Jesus is upon us. It said, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. It says, The Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Look at that. This looks like what the average person needs to be on top of our game in life, generally speaking. For me to excel in my career, I need a spirit of wisdom. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. I need a spirit of wisdom. I need the spirit of counsel, which is the ability to know what to do from within. A divine counsel. Such so that the Holy Spirit is counseling you from inside. <laughs> I hope somebody's getting what I'm saying. And the spirit of might there speaks to boldness and courage that cannot be concocted or bought with money or that, that, is, that is real and powerful. Not bonus that comes from, from alcohol or, or, or any kind of substance. That only works on people's mind and psyche. It does not, it, there's no backup power. When the Holy Spirit gives you boldness, it backs it up with the power of God. Is somebody sit with me right now? That's what the Bible says the Holy Spirit gives or imparts on believers. That's what the Holy Spirit imparts on believers. So the Holy Spirit wants to empower you 
to win souls into the kingdom and to make progress in life. Your preaching of the gospel will lose believability if you don't engage the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom for living. I cannot prove that uh, God can help somebody in their marriage if I have not access wisdom to work out my own. Yeah. If you start one business and it shuts down, start another business and it shuts down, you will not be able to preach the gospel that God empowers people to build wealth or to create wealth. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So, what am I saying today? It's that the Holy Spirit was primarily given to you and I to empower us to represent God. You shall receive power, Acts 1 and verse 8, and you shall be witnesses unto me. A witness is the one that says what they have encountered, what they have seen. But there's a power that is needful for us to be able to do it effectively. And that same power is what you and I need to live and to excel in every area of life. So the Holy Spirit wants to empower you to win souls into the kingdom of God and to make progress in life. When the Holy Spirit came upon characters in the scriptures, we clearly saw the difference from when they had no encounter with the Holy Ghost and when they now had an encounter with the Holy Ghost. There are things that God has done through this small me that sometimes... It amazes me how it happens. It can only be by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I remember where I was when the Holy Spirit spoke to me about something. And one, two years down the line, I see it practically. And I say, this God is too real. It's too real. There are things that I've done in my life, there are things we've done in this church that I, the devil cannot con convince me or make me second guess the fact that the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And the effect of it is too much. The effect is, as in, is too much for anybody not to be convinced that the Holy Spirit is working here. Glory be to Jesus. Until Jesus comes, I will be giving the testimony of how we got this, this particular location, this, this business conference center, this broadcast center where you are hearing me from, everyone at home. I will be giving this testimony. There's a measure of boldness and courage that the Holy Spirit gives to be able to take your territory in life. Enough of all these, you know, uh, uh, try and error and just bootstrapping anyhow and just doing, doing, without really focusing. Jesus said, I will send you another helper. You know, it's one thing for you to be praying for helper of destiny and to be neglecting the Holy Ghost. And to be thinking that uh, God, God will just send somebody. You don't have a walk with the Spirit of God. You, do, you don't ask him questions. You don't tell, tell him, you know, to, to, you don't ask him to tell you what to do. Many people that claim to need counseling in their marriage, and I love, I love to counsel people. We have a whole full counseling ministry in this church. I need you to understand a lot of the time, our issues will be cut in half if we take counsel from the Holy Ghost. If you allow the Holy Spirit to counsel you, you wake up in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, this issue in this marriage, how do you want me to go about resolving it? And the Holy Spirit says, first, embrace the joy of the Lord because you are not the only one that has marital issues. So start smiling now. It's all of us smile. So you smile, then he then tells you, Go and greet your husband. Tell her, no. <laughs> and you refuse. Jesus said, Moses allowed you to divorce your spouses because of the hardness of your heart. He said in the beginning, it was not so. It is hardness of heart that makes people reject the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Go and do this. 
No. Yet, you want God to send you help. Somebody, God is speaking to you. Uh, so how, how will this business move forward when God puts in your heart tight, pay tight of that business? And say, ah, no. Those, those American demons have come again. Yeah, those Pentecostal demons always asking for money. You think it's the demon that is talking to you? Yet, you are praying for help. You cannot listen to the sinful instruction from the Holy Spirit. I was talking about this place. I used to live in the estate behind here, Roman Garden Estate, just behind the church here. One Saturday morning, I felt like taking a walk. And the Holy Spirit directed me here and said, walk around this place. This was uh, grassland, just fenced with corrugated iron sheet. I walked around here like twice, praying with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit said, this is the next location for the church. And I felt it in my spirit that God was speaking to me. That was a Saturday. Those days we used to have environmental sanitation on Saturdays and everywhere was shut down. The next day, Sunday, I spoke to uh, the chairman of the committee in charge of uh, building and real estate in the church. I said, if the God told me that it is, you know that land, I described it. I said, no, don't worry, pastor. Tomorrow we'll put a call through to the agent in charge of it. They called the agent, the agent said, uh, somebody, some people have made deposit for the land. I told him, when he called me, I said, if God spoke to me, they will not be able to buy it. Except I'm hearing myself. Yeah. Except I'm hearing. See, this working with the Holy Spirit is real. The fact that you are not at that level does not mean that there's no permission for you to step there. You choose how deep you want to go with God per time. And some of us are too used to using willpower and bulldozing our way and then meet roadblock. And that's when you now look for where they are doing BG. When they didn't invite you, you invite yourself. <laughs> because you literally walk yourself into a dead end. You know, some people right now, anywhere there's prayer, they are there. How will you get yourself into dangerous and, uh, you know, and uh, how do I put it? Desperate prayer all the time. When. I mean, there's a situation you get yourself, you need desperate prayer. You need to pray. I agree. But that cannot be your default. You're supposed to have a walk with the Holy Spirit. You cannot be in crisis all your life. In real life, the tsunami or flood happen every day. It's when flood happens, like a, 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 in, on the highland here in Lagos, that we can say, ah, there's crisis, so let's be. The moment anybody is living as if there's crisis every day, that person doesn't have a work with God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are seasons of crisis where you need to pray and slug it out. But what God wants from believers is that we have a work with him. Where you hear him, you understand what he wants for now, you walk in his precept, you understand his word, you live a kingdom life. You see yourself as a diplomat of heaven. Your assignment and preoccupation is how the will of God will be done here or not. Jesus said, when you pray, pray after this manner. Our Father, who is in heaven, I will be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That comes before, give us this day our daily bread. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of the power of the Holy Ghost is for the promotion of the kingdom of God. Whilst we promote the kingdom of God, we cannot lack bread in abundance. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. You know, earlier in our Christianity, we thought seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness is just about being holy and being clean. No. You can be holy and clean and yet be useless to God. Yeah. Many of us, many of us have clean plates at home. Until you use the plate, the cleanliness is useless. The cleanness only qualifies it to be used. It's okay to be clean, but God wants to use you. Yeah. And it's also a word for the people who don't feel clean. Clean up. Yeah, so you can also join. <laughs> I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 
But you know some people, they just feel God doesn't have any problem with me. I don't live in sin and all that. God said, I'm not impressed. I'm talking on behalf of God to you this morning. I'm not impressed. Until everyone finds you useful, your holiness is useless. <laughs> Until you can speak for God in your office, your holiness is useless. Yeah. It's one thing not to participate in corruption. It's another thing to be able to say, corruption will not thrive around me. I will sit together. Yeah. So it's not enough. To just say, I'm, I'm, I'm a holy child of God. No, God wants to use you. He wants you to become his mouthpiece. But the most critical thing I want you to hear from me today is that until you start to use the power of the Holy Spirit for the primary purpose for which it was sent to you, for which the Holy Spirit is, has been released to you, you will not get the full import of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, the full effect you know the reason why we have to pray, 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 pray about some business breakthrough or this and that and, you know, package and do everything? A lot of the time is either because of lack of wisdom or lack of power. And the power will not be available because I'm abusing it. Not because not available, but because I'm only using it and I want to use God. Some people just want to use God. They don't want God to use them. You are the one that I'm speaking to this month. Because God sent us to you that he wants to use you. Yeah. And he wants to use you where you are. Where he has placed you. In your neighborhood, in your office, in that group on WhatsApp where they are talking trash and you are there listening and absorbing it without saying anything. See that you say the truth or you check out. <laughs> Somebody listen to me today. Yeah. You can't be a representative of heaven and be docile. And then expect that you will switch on the Holy Ghost when it comes to being your helper. I don't know if somebody's getting me today. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to have full effect in your life from time to time. God is using you consistently. Uh, let me quickly give uh, an example and then uh, 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 I'll have one or two things that start to wrap up. The, look at the life of Peter. Peter, in Matthew 26, he was a very lily livered person who could not stand up for Christ from verse 69. And many of us are still living like that today. Matthew 26 and verse 69. This was when Jesus had been arrested, and the disciples fled for their life. Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him saying, you also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are saying. Verse 71. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him and said, to those who were there. This fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again, he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. Don't that fire me if I'm saying, <laughs> if I'm lying. Yeah. But with an oath, he added oath to it now. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 you know. And look at the last one, in verse 73. And he said, a little Later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely, you also are one of them, for your speech betrays you. You know, some of us, outside of church, we package. Like we've never been to church. But once in a while, one hallelujah will just sleep. <laughs> and everybody will look at you and say, ah, It's not that kind of hallelujah, Joe. It's something, you know, uh -huh. I don't know if you understand. That's what happened there. Peter said something. Ah, they now look at him. It's only those uh, followers of Jesus that talk like this. So, yeah, I said, no, 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 no. No. In fact, this time around, he took it to a new level. He began to curse and swear, saying, I do not, I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus who had said to him before the rooster crowed. You will deny me three times. So he went out and wept bitterly. Somebody, 
I want to challenge you today. You know, today, we don't deny him with our words again. We deny him with our actions and inaction. Yeah. We deny him uh, when we refuse to stand up for the truth. When we refuse to challenge somebody to come out of sin. When we refuse to challenge somebody to seek Jesus. When we refuse to share our testimonies. Those are the ways we are denying him today. Yeah. When we look away, when we're supposed to speak up for the kingdom of God. That's what our, you know, that's, that's, that's how we deny him today. When we refuse to stand up for righteousness, we deny him. We deny him. But look at, this is where I'm going. The same Peter that denied Christ in Matthew 26. After the day of Pentecost in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. By the time you get to verse 14 of Acts chapter 2, what you, what you will see was a Peter who a few days ago, a few weeks ago, was denying, denying. But after the encounter with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, Peter stood up in verse 14. The Bible says, but Peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Now he was not talking to a little girl or a small boy. He was a whole city. And Peter was bold enough to challenge the whole city that things have changed around here. These men are not drawn. Give me uh, verse 15. Said so these men that you are looking at, said so these are not drawn as you suppose since it is only the third hour of the day. This is 9 a.m. Guys, we are not drunk. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, 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 but what, this was what was spoken by the prophet uh, Joel. That the Spirit of God will come upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. This is what is happening here. This is that that was spoken. What God wants us to be able to do with the power of the Holy Ghost was to be able to go out there and say this that you are seeing is that that was written. This that you are seeing is that that was spoken. We are the fulfillment of prophecies. Glory be to Jesus. When we live our lives like this, we see the power of the Holy Spirit. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 3, the same Peter, Peter and John, they were on a normal day just going to the temple. When they woke up that morning and they wrote their to-do list, part of it was not that they were going to heal any lame man. You see, when you live naturally with the Holy Spirit, there are things that will happen in your life that were not part of your to-do list. The Holy Spirit will just use you. They were going, the Bible says, at the ninth hour, into a prayer meeting, in the temple, they just go into the temple to pray, and then they saw the man at the gate. He was lame. They didn't pay attention to him initially, but the man was asking them, please now, give me something, you know. Ah. They now looked at him, and they realized that they didn't have change. Yeah. But we can still help this man. That sometimes God will put you in a situation where you may feel that you don't have anything, but when you look within, you will realize that you, have, you carry the Holy Spirit. And there's something you can do in that situation. And all of a sudden, he says, silver and gold we do not have, but what we have we give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. They held the hand of the man. The man started to walk, limp, and glorify God. And from that point, a notable miracle started to happen in their life. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there are some level of divine intervention, of manifestation of God's power that you are trusting God for that will never start to happen until you start to uh, walk in the full realization of the fact that you carry the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And God wants you to use that power to win souls and to, to represent the kingdom. And from that, it starts to manifest in your normal day-to-day -day life. The greatest spiritual warfare takes place on the battlefield of evangelism. If you have not won in spiritual warfare, in battlefield of evangelism, it's difficult uh, to try to do things with the power of the Holy Spirit in normal life. Glory be to Jesus. In normal life. In normal life. When God has challenged you before to speak to somebody and you went ahead and spoke to them. When God has led you to someone before and you did something to intervene in a situation, to pray until something happened in somebody's life, when you have a business issue, you know how to pray until some, something happens. The same power that God uses through you to rescue a life is the same power that will rescue that business situation. For somebody here today, I speak to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Stop running around from pillar to post 
asking for help. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you where you will get help or what you need to do to break into your next level. Yeah. You can't carry God in you by the Holy Spirit and be begging men all over the place. God is God's prerogative who will help you. If you continue to ask men for help, you may continue for a long time. When God directs you to one person, the person does not have a choice. Jesus told his disciples, go to the place where two ways met. You will see a donkey tied. Uh, lose it. And if anybody asks you, tell them that the Lord has need of it. When God sends you to somebody, they wanted to have uh, the last supper with his disciples. He sent them to a place and uh, the man that has an upper room, he said, they should just go and ask. The thing has been provided. I don't know if you're, you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah, that's how God operates. That's how God operates. If you want to be natural completely, you can. You can be running around, you know, Victoria Island and everywhere, knocking door from office to office. You can do that for the next three months and nothing will happen. But if you have the Holy Spirit, <laughs> the Holy Spirit says, go to so-and-so person. Yeah. He told Elijah, go to Zarephath. I've prepared a widow there to meet you. There are many widows in Zarephath, but the Holy Ghost directed into one particular one. And when he got there, miracles happened. Yeah. Because he went on the instruction of the Holy Spirit. He went on the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to Jesus. Lastly today, these four things are the things that I want you to start to trust God for this season. The four attributes unlocked by the power of the Holy Spirit in a believer. One is courage. The same courage that you need to win souls is the same courage that you need to break the next level in business. Don't overfocus in business only. Let the Holy Ghost use you to summon enough courage to walk up even to a senior colleague and ask to pray for them. Somebody you know. You know this person's life is scattering. And the person is looking for help. And you are there. You carry the Holy Spirit. God wants to use you there. If you can demonstrate courage there, if you need to go to the White House or Aso Rock here in Nigeria <laughs> to face anybody, you'll be able to face anybody. Yeah. By the grace of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit, there's no one under heaven that we can't walk up to today. And I don't have to do anything than to pray. I don't have to drink anything. I don't have to shack anything. You know, some people, until they shack something, they can't face somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you carry fire on your head, we carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I've met with occultic people. <laughs> you know, I've shared this testimony before. Let me share it again. Many years ago, I went to, for a naming ceremony to conduct a christening. I was an associate pastor at Desta Christian Center at that time. And this happened somewhere in Lagos here, around Ojota. I parked my car and I was going in. And a man from the balcony called me and said, don't you know they don't park on this street? I said, for what now? This is government street now. It's started by government. This is the house where I came to do naming. Why can't I park here? He said, because it's opposite my house. I'm telling you, he said, because it's opposite my house. I said, I do, I do, I'm not parking in front of your house. I'm parking on this side. This is the adjacent building. That's, this is where I'm going. And the man said, you are still talking. Ah. Hey. Apparently, it was an occultic man that terrorized everybody on the street. And people ran away from him. And thank God for ignorance. Because it's better to start on the wing of ignorance than the Holy Spirit will unleash upon you. You know, sometimes when you don't know anything, it's better. Yeah. It's better. I'm telling you the truth. It's better. Because the harassment of mind that you know that is an occultic, sometimes people run away. But the more I spoke to him, the more I gained courage. The man whose uh, son I went to name came out and was begging me and said, Pastor, please, uh, no, uh, don't argue with him. Oh. Let's move. I said, if you touch my car, leave my car there. <laughs> we will go in now and name your baby. Anything that the man wants to do, if he wants my car to disappear, let it disappear. I, know, I will know I donate it on the power of the Holy Ghost. If it disappears, it disappears. Let's go inside. Yeah. So we went inside. I named the baby. I came out. The man was ranting and doing. He said, I will speak to you now and you will drive this car into the Atlantic Ocean. I said, speak now. <laughs> yeah. 
Speak. See everybody begging me. Pastor, come and be going. Please. You know. <laughs> you know, the truth was that they felt that after I had gone, the man would come after them. So I was trying to give them courage. That don't worry. It's the same uh, boldness that I'm talking now that you should be talking. Nobody should take over. You pay rent in this place, don't you? It's not your landlord. Yeah. It was a BMW 3 Series I was driving then. I opened my car. Tonto. <laughs> the man was still talking, talking. I didn't move. Enter my car, shut the door, put on praise and worship music. I said, like, I'm driving on the road. Be speaking in Atlantic Ocean. From where? I drove that car, I think, for another two years before God told me to give it out. <laughs> nothing happened to the car, and nothing happened to me. I'm still here today talking to you. <laughs> if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will over-glorify witchcraft and sorcery. And the Bible says, <laughs> God has made you to sit together with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. And this occultic powers, sorceries, they are under you. I'm sure as we are clapping, as some people are still saying, me, I'm not going to clap well, because I don't want them to come after you. If you are not clapping, you don't have faith. Clap right now. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. God wants to give you Boldness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Courage by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Courage. Boldness. Boldness. The readiness to speak, act, and act based on the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Talk about courage. Then there's boldness. It comes by the Spirit. This same boldness is what you need to get your next promotion. But use it for God first. So that his power can back you up when you have to speak in a boardroom. And you cannot be refused. Because the primary purpose of the power of the Holy Ghost in the life of a believer is to, is to, to enlarge the kingdom of God. When we choose not to use it for that purpose, when we are only using it for the other purpose, the power of the kingdom will not back it up. That's what I'm saying. Glory be to Jesus. And lastly today, compassion and empathy. The Holy Spirit is the one that draws out compassion. The heartfelt awareness and uh, awareness of and connection with the need and yearning of people is the Holy Spirit that works it out in us. Jesus had compassion. Jesus had compassion all through the scripture. He had compassion on them and he healed them. He had compassion on them and he healed them. In the feeding of 5,000, it was compassion. The disciples came and said, send them away. Let them go and look for bread on their own. The Bible said Jesus had compassion on them. And he said, is there no one that has anything? And that compassion brought, you know, five loaves and two fish. And he blessed it and broke it. Somebody listen to me right now. The Holy Spirit this season will be working out compassion in you. And that compassion will cause things to multiply in your hand. Yeah. Because of compassion, your business will boom. Because God knows that as he booms by the power of the Holy Ghost, based on the compassion, you are going to do something with the money. Yeah. Such people don't pray, 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 pray. I think they have funded of heaven before heaven answered them. Because they have responded to the compassion in their heart by the Holy Spirit. Glory be to Jesus. I said glory be to Jesus. Rise up on your faith, everyone. Let's, let's say it. One or two prayers as to bring this service to a close. Thank you, everlasting Father. Lift your two hands to Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you afresh. I yield myself to you afresh. I yield myself to you afresh. Give me boldness. Give me courage. Give me boldness. Give me courage. My portion in destiny will not elude me. I receive fresh boldness, fresh courage to step out and represent Jesus this new month. 
Somebody pray this morning. Let that be the prayer of your heart right now. Fresh courage, fresh boldness. Holy Spirit, walk compassion within me. Walk compassion within me. Somebody lift your voice and pray right now. Mambre deke le prodoko shuta yanda. Mera daga bayaba. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4, when the disciples were threatened, they went back to their company and they prayed, grant your servants boldness that they may declare the word of God, that they may speak the word of God with boldness by strengthening your, uh, stretching your hands to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through your holy servant Jesus. The Bible says where they prayed was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Will you stretch forth your hand today and say, Father, fill me with your spirit afresh. And let the spirit of boldness come upon me. The spirit of boldness. The spirit of courage. Holy Spirit. You are the one who empowers with boldness and courage with compassion and empathy. I release myself to you afresh. Open my eyes to see the things that I need to see. Cause me to understand the things that you're doing around me. Help me to be able to stand for you in this new month. And as I stand for you, let everyone stand for me in the places that matter. Fill us afresh, Holy Spirit. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we bless your name. Right now, I want you to lift your two hands as I pray. There's someone here today, whether you are alive or you are online, right now, is your deliverance service. And I'm talking about the old of stagnation, broken. As we pray in the Holy Ghost right now, all over this place and for everyone online, I want you to lift your voice. Whatever has stagnated around anyone on this first day of the month of May, as we lift our voice to pray right now, there shall be a divine activation of the power of God in the places where things have stagnated. Lift your voice right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Break the hold of stagnation in any area around your life. But I'm speaking to someone right now who has experienced stagnation in your career. We speak to that career path to open up in the name of the Lord Jesus. On this workers' day, we decree Nothing will cut you short in your career in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to silence the adversary in your career in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every adversary of your career will stand against them. Anyone that is speaking against your business, Makete Kerende Lege Bosha, we declare right now by the force of favor that stagnation is broken. In the name of the Lord Jesus, stagnation is broken. We command the release of the power of the Holy Ghost in this house. Everyone online, lift your voice right now. We command the release of the power of the Holy Ghost right now. There's a mighty deliverance from the spirit of stagnation. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. Mambra neke lebe dege sota yanda. A karande lege bosha. Ye kete kere de bosha. Embro non ko leke tu porondo logo brondo lobo. Ma kente kere de lege bosha. Marando rodobo sataya. E karanda lege suso tokra anda lege shute yende. 
Thank you, everlasting Father. Membre nakolobo shata. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. One more prayer. For anyone here who may be experiencing frustration, God wants to put an end to frustration. Frustration in business where you just realize Ministers, can we reach out to that person? Just lay hands on, on the person and just speak peace and the blessing of God over that person. It's a deliverance service, I told you. Yeah. The hand of God is upon somebody in that place right now. Right now. Right now. Speak to whatever is operational there and command it to go. Lift your voice, everyone here. Whatever seeks to frustrate destiny. The Bible says God disappointed the verses of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. For somebody right now, you may be expressing frustration in marriage, frustration in business. This is the first day of the month of May. I want you to speak against the hold of frustration and every frustrating experience. Break chains right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whatever seeks to frustrate anyone's, whatever seeks to frustrate anyone's destiny, I speak against you right now. Whatever sabotages your efforts, whatever sabotages your effort in business, sabotages your effort in your career, I want you to speak against such right now. In the name of Jesus, in this new month, frustration comes to an end. In the name of the Lord Jesus, frustration comes to an end this new month. In the name of the Lord Jesus, man breneke libre de gashuto yende. Makaranda la gavaya baba, ekere de gelebosha, ye branenke like suso to krodobo shita, akarada gavaya ba, reke se se te kere de gebosha, la brande lege se se te karande, ye karande le gebosha. An hand has come to frustration. An hand has come to frustration. Makata kaya gavaya, marende le geboshuta yani. An hand has come to frustration. Somebody online, lift your voice right now. Speak over that frustrating experience. Declare right now an end to that frustration. Whatever the enemy is using to frustrate anyone here, we stand against it in the name of Jesus. We break cycles of frustration. We decree an end to cycles of frustration. We decree an end to cycles of frustration. We decree an end to cycles of frustration. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree an end to cycles of frustration. Thank you, everybody. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Somebody shout a believing amen. So everlasting Father, we thank you for your hand upon everyone joined to this service, right in this room and everyone online. We decree the cycles of frustration is terminated now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we declare right now a mighty deliverance from the spirit of stagnation. In any aspect of life where there has been any form of stagnation, in this month of May, we declare stagnation comes to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare this is a season of testimonies. Stagnation turns to a testimony. Frustration gives way to a new testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the word of the Lord says, who is he that has spoken when the Lord has not commanded it? So every voice that is speaking over your destiny, contrary to the will of God, we silence them now in the name of Jesus. We silence the voice of doubt and timidity. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody, the picture I have in my spirit is like you are about to cross a Red Sea. It's a Red Sea kind of situation. And from the message of this morning, the Holy Spirit is empowering you to walk in because you are going to walk on dry ground. It may look like Red Sea right now, but as you put your feet, you are going to walk on dry ground. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak to somebody here right now. You are in an indebtedness, indebted situation. It's going to start in this month of May. That debt position is going to be overturned. In the name of Jesus. Before this month is over, someone who is net dick in indebtedness, I speak to you by the Spirit of God, whether you are right here or online, before this month is over, your position will turn. The God who caused Israel to walk on dry ground will cause you to walk on dry ground in that Red Sea of indebtedness. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That person speak to you by the Spirit of God. Don't take your life. Your time has not come. God said, I will overturn. And then I will give you long life. Amen. And you will enjoy my goodness. Amen. And I'm speaking to somebody here who has been suicidal in the past month. I Curse that spirit of suicide. Yeah. And I decree you are delivered now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, everlasting Father. Wave your hands to Jesus all over this place and celebrate Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we bless your name. Just wave those hands to him and just bless him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Thank him. Lord, we celebrate your goodness in this house. And we thank you for this new month. Thank you for what you are set to do. Take all the glory in Jesus' precious name. If you are blessed today, put your hands together, celebrate Jesus. Please, you may have your seat. Have your seat. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Please have your seat. Can I crave our indulgence to just bow down our heads just for a moment? And please, I want the privacy of the moment, so let's, let's have very, very minimal movement right now. I want to pray for anyone, anyone at all who may be uh, here doubting in your heart whether you have a relationship with God or not. Somebody who may be saying, Pastor, I'm far away from God. I want Jesus in my life. I want Jesus in my life. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Somebody who may be saying, I said the prayer before, but I backslid into sin. I also want to pray for you. Jesus wants to come into your life, restore you to himself, and give you a new beginning. If you are right in this room, or you are right online, I want to pray for you right now. I want to submit my life to Jesus, or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I've said the prayer before, but I know there's a separation between me and God. I want to pray for you right now. If you don't mind, can you lift your right hand above your head where you are seated, and I'm going to pray for you. If you are online, please go to the chat or comment. And let us know, I'm giving my life to Jesus. 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 I'm giving, if you're on the gallery, under the gallery, on the main floor, just lift your right hand above your head. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. God will start something new in your life right now, right today, right here today, right now and today. In the name of Jesus, and you'll never be the same again. If your hand is up, can you stand by your chair right there? Just stand by your chair right there and say this prayer with me. Stand by your chair right there and say this prayer with me. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. Just stand by your chair right there and say this prayer with me. Uh, you will never be the same again. Thank you for standing on the gallery. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. Just, just stand by your chair right there. Remain where you are, but stand. Thank you for standing, my sister. God bless you. God bless you. God is starting something new in your life. Something new. Something new. A fresh breath of the Holy Ghost is coming upon you today. Everyone online, if you're saying a prayer with me, go to the chat and, and let us know. I'm, uh, I want to give my life to Christ. I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Something new is starting in your life right now, right now, right now. I'm still waiting for one or two more people. God is prodding your heart. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. It's time to open up. 
and just stand for him right now. Just be bold enough and stand and give God a chance in your life. Give God a chance in your life. Give God a chance in your life. If you're standing and if you're online uh, and, uh, uh, and you want to say the prayer with me, please say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I ask that you forgive me my sins and cleanse me from every unrighteousness. So I receive you today as my Lord and my personal Savior. I accept the sacrifice on the cross as payment for my sin. And I receive your blood to wash me clean and make me acceptable in your sight. Say, I declare today that I'm born again. I'm a child of God from this moment forward. 